Hello and welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be installing this big sucker. Dead. Don't do that. This is a two inch hydraulic cylinder with an inch and a quarter rod. This one has a 26 inch stroke. It's 34 inches retracted and 60 inches fully up. At first, I was a little nervous ordering this. Thought maybe I should go up to a two and a half inch to get the inch and a half rod, but this is supposed to be 3,500 PSI on this one, so it's really heavy. It's about somewhere between 60 and 80 pounds. It's a big chunk of metal. Uh, I think it's gonna do nice. I have this lifted up with the tractor. I measured it when it was retracted. Let's see how high the lift will go with this fully extended. Okay, so it should be about like this in placement. Let's measure that and see how high it is. All right, that's at seven foot nine. Uh, I'm gonna get a little reminder at how deep our pit is. And the top of our pit is at six foot 11. We're gonna be able to raise this above the floor about a foot. All right, let's bring this thing down and start tacking this in. Let's see how it looks. Okay, after a little bit of deliberation, I've decided I wanted to move the rim further back. So what that will do is it'll give me a little more leverage on this top bar because I won't be going towards the axis so much when I need to mount it. And since we had all that extra travel, uh, this will be no big deal. In order to stiffen up this bar, because I wanted this to be the nice enclosed tube for strength, but uh, I needed to cut into here to get further back in. Uh, I also needed to cut some slots to be able to get this pin in and out and be able to put its cotters in. So I'm just going to take and beef up this tube and kind of in, inner skeleton it. The next step is going to be taking my two plates and setting them in here. And then we'll weld those in there. But first, I'm going to match drill these plates, weld them together and match drill them so that the pin will be perfectly even between both and then we'll spot weld that in with the pin in place. I've been looking for just the right opportunity to be able to box this top end in without covering up the grease dirt. And I think this design overlapping that is going to give us a lot of triangulation of strength where we'll be able to secure these brackets in place, uh, lock the frame together, get good pulling power against here. Uh, this is going to make this really strong. And like I said, we'll probably do something similar over here on the bottom side. So like I said, this beam is in the way. We'll have to go under there to here to under there. 
I'm just tacking everything in place right now. Uh, I want to make sure I take a good look at stuff. I've already noticed that I'm going to end up trapping this in. So we want to get this cylinder out of here. Uh, we will have to raise the frame up a little bit to be able to push the cylinder back down, but uh, That's okay. I mean, that's just Sometimes the maintenance Has to come a little after the design. I'm, I'm liking it. It's looking good Tell me what you guys think in the comments so far. Is this gonna give me good strength for pushing this way? I think so Okay, so we got all the supports welded in place. We got the ram installed, and uh, we're rechecking our distance on this. And well, moving that back three inches lost us 10 inches of height. So right now, we're exactly the height of the pit, the 82, 83 inch height. We're right on it. But there's still a couple of things in factor here. We got our bottom rails we got to build. We got to build our floor assembly with strength. So with all that, we still have a couple inches of extra play for this to go up. Because we all know the hydraulics like to settle down a little bit. We definitely want to be able to go a little above the floor. But uh, yeah, changing this three inches gave us an 11 inch difference. The reason why I wanted to change this and this angle is this was resting further this way, which left a lot more leverage out here that this was gonna have to lift. So I wanted that hydraulic to have all the advantage it could have. If we're gonna have 3,000 pounds of force, and if this is half the way to the distance up, then we got about 1,500 pounds of lifting capacity at this point. It's definitely a lot of finicky measurements. You change one thing and you get a big change. So hopefully this will still give us that feature that we wanted to be able to lower the weight of a motorcycle down into the pit that's kind of a hope to have i mean at the end of this we may end up where all it can lift is just my body weight but we still have the ability to upgrade the strength of this ram or potentially even go to two rams in the future either way we're going to still get a lot of functionality out of this elevator it's still going to be super handy for working on vehicles but we'll find that all out when we move into our test phase you can see here i added all this strength so that when it's pushing this way we'll have a lot of strength that beginning push is going to be a lot of power and a lot of strain on this thing we want to make sure that we're not bowing this bar we want to be able to have that 3,000 pound resistance as we can see this thing changed the angle of pushing in to pushing up um, so I may need to come back and add an extra bar on the bottom of this for a little more strength but honestly I don't imagine this bar bending coming up like this it's not being as strained as much in this position because we already have our leverage going up on this we're trading longitude for latitude when it comes to lifting this past the halfway point down here on the bottom uh, I put a couple of angles in here to keep this ram from collapsing this joint. I boxed all this stuff in as good as I could and uh, I think that's going to take a lot of force to go against this because this is the bottom end. If I felt a little more concern, I could put uh, a little knuckle on the back side of this because I mean, what is it going to be hitting? It's going to be going against the ground. I'd rather not do that. I think that this is going to be a lot of strength. I do have everything welded on top and bottom of everything, so 
uh, definitely a lot of strength in our welds. I'm thinking I want to put one more gusset here on this side uh, just to keep this middle section from wanting to have any bowing. We already have these on that. Probably about all it needs is another angle iron. But uh, other than that, uh, our welding on this X frame part is almost done. Uh, we'll be putting the cap on. So we'll get this cleaned it up and then we'll move into paint. And uh, I kind of like the yellow hazard. So for the X part, I'm gonna go with this yellow. Um, hopefully it's about as close it's about as close as I think I could get to our stripes. Kind of hard to find the right shade of yellow at the uh, store, but this will give us the ability to do some yellow accents. I kind of like the thought of that. I like that primer gray, this yellow. I think the pit looks really cool. And uh, while we're down there in the bottom maintenancing this thing, uh, probably good to be able to have a little heads up if we're uh, bumping our head. This is supposed to be paint and primer in one. This thing is going to be indoors, so I don't need to do quite as heavy duty as a job as we do for like our trailer. Let's get this finished up, see how it looks with some paint, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I decided to go ahead and add that bracing after all. It's going to be a lot easier to do this now before I paint it. Uh, it's also a lot easier to do it now before there's something bent. So I uh, added the three inch strap, got a little support on the back. Just some uh, little welds there once in a while. And this will keep when that ram is in that full position. Uh, just give this bar added strength for the vertical weight also. So no harm in that. Went ahead and threw in this extra support. Now we're ready for paint. Well, this is uh, the paint that I chose. Uh, wanted to have yellow so you can see uh, when I'm actuating, you can kind of see it moving a little better, but uh, I'm going to let this paint dry. I'm going to wrap this video up now, and uh, I got the hydraulic pump on order. So when that gets in, we're going to take and pre-locate it and do our measurements for our hydraulic tubes. Um, we won't be able to do our top cap and floor until we have pressure on the hydraulics. Not quite sure the sequence of the next video is coming out, but I'll try to release it in the way that makes the most sense. But yeah, we're back at it, so stay tuned and you'll start to see some progression really quickly on this. Comment what you think. If you haven't yet, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Building